Hi, Tenfold. My name is Lili Tandabeni from Vileka SSB in Bordeaux, Brandenburg. And I have this question that I need help with. Right. So let's go and look at this question together, guys, so that you can see what is going on before we try and analyze it together. Let's go look at it together before we try and break it down so that you know what you really need to do. Right. It says to us here, in the figure, there's a line QP that is equal to another line QR, and QAB bisects an angle PQS. And that is all that is given to us. And then there's a lot of lines that are crossing each other that you can see from this particular sketch. Now, here's advice when you're dealing with geometry, guys. Here's very important advice. When you get the love letter, right, don't just get the love letter and jump into questions. That is where you guys mess it up because you lose key information that you can get on your own just by using the love letter that is sent to you. Right, so what we're going to do, we're going to take the information that was given to us and analyze that and see how much damage can we do on the question. How much information can we extract from the drawing using what was given and what we can see when we look at the question. So that is very important. You have to keep that in mind. There's no geometry without analysis. So get the question, look at the given information, analyze the drawing and see. Because of this statement, how much can I conclude from what I am looking at in the sketch? So that is how we are going to approach the question before we even start looking at the actual questions. So let's see what is happening here. We were told that a line QP is equal to another line QR. So QP is this line here. QP is equal to another line QR. Now, when two lines are equal in a triangle, we know that we've got an isosceles. So I'm just immediately going to say, there's an angle here, a small angle there, not to be equal to another angle that is there. I'm gonna ask you to allow me, you can even say this in the exam, because trying to relate P's and Q's and S's and R's is always challenging. So the easiest way of working with these things is just to say, maybe let's let this one be P1 and let this one be P2. So I'm gonna say, let angle P1 be X, right? If angle P1 is X, clearly, if I put this angle as X here, there's another one that will be X, which is the angle here by R, right? This angle will also become X as well, right? So I'm gonna uh, uh, name this R1 and R2. So I'm gonna say angle R1 is equal to, angle P1 is also equal to X. Why? Because these are angles that are opposite equal sides. In an isosceles, when you've got two lines that are equal, then we definitely know off the bat that there will be two angles that are also equal to each other, right? Now, beyond that, you will notice that PQRS is a cyclic quadrilateral, right? That means that if this is angle S1 and this one is angle S2, right? Let's just change color so that you can see the labels quite nicely. Clearly, you will see that this will also become X as well. We have X here, it will also become X there. Why is it also becoming X? Well, they are simply angles subtended by the same chord PQ. So I'm gonna also go and say angle S1 is equal to, angle R1 is equal to X, and the reason for this is because those are simply angles subtended by the same chord, or angles on the same, uh, um, angles on the same segment, or angles subtended by, uh, the same chord. You can put it in that way, it is also an acceptable reason, right? That's the amount of information, uh, information that I have from this. So then I'm going to continue and look at the other given information that we can see here. If you look closely, when you're writing this analysis, write it as part of your submission because the examiner will also look at that and give you marks. You can clearly claim that I've already argued why things are equal if you need to use them. Okay, cool. Moving on. There's another part from the love letter that says to us there, um, QAB, there's a line QAB. This line QAB bisects angle PQS. So if it bisects, it means it cuts it into two equal pieces. So that means that this bit here is equal to that bit there. The angle that you're looking at here will be equal to the second angle there. So I'm gonna call them Y and call this one Y as well, right? So those angles will be equal to each other because of the fact that we were told that that straight line bisects that particular angle. Question one, we have to now prove that QP over QS is equal to QA over QB. Now, when you've got ratios like this, ratios such as these ones come from similar triangles. So we have to find some triangle and prove that it's similar to some second triangle. When we have proved that two triangles are similar, then we can be able to argue and say a ratios of the corresponding sides are also equal to each other. So the challenge here is to identify those triangles. I'm looking for a triangle 
that has got Q, P, and A on it. Let's see if we can find that triangle on the sketch. So I'm looking for this triangle. It's going to have Q, right? It must have P, and it must have A on it. So that particular triangle is my triangle of interest. I have to prove that triangle is similar to another triangle that has got Q, S, and B on it. So that has to be the same as the triangle that has got Q, uh, S, and B on it. So Q, and then S, and then B. So I have to prove that those two triangles are similar to each other. Once I'm done doing that, then it means I will have uh, the opportunity to say the ratios are in equal proportions, and then I will actually be able to uh, claim whatever the examiner wants me to deal with. So I'm going to say in triangle, in triangle um, QPA, in triangle QPA and the second triangle, let's see what's that triangle. The second triangle is triangle QSB, in triangle QSB. We need to identify three angles that are each uh, equal to each other. Remember, if two of them are equal, then the third one will automatically, uh, automatically also be equal. So let's check if those angles are equal. Clearly, you can see that in the yellow triangle, we have Y. Even in the second triangle, we also have Y. So angle Q1 is equal to angle Q2 there, which are not labeled yet. You can actually put them and say, this one is Q1, and the other one is simply going to become Q2. And then you are going to say those angles are equal. So angle Q1 is equal to angle Q2, and this information was given to us. Moving on, let's find something else that is also equal. You will see that we've got P1 as X, we also have S1 as X, and that has been proven above from the previous in information. So angle P1 is equal to angle S1 is equal to S, X, and this information was proven from the previous information that we did when we did our analysis. Once we've got two angles equal, then automatically the third one, I just proved that Q equals to Q, I proved that P is equal to S, then clearly angle A in the first triangle will be equal to angle B in the second triangle, and this is because of sum of angles um, in a triangle. Sum of angles of a triangle add up to 180, so if two angles are equal, then the third ones will automatically be equal. Therefore, from this information, we can then say, therefore, triangle QPA is similar to triangle QSB, and the reason is angle, angle, angle. The only way you can be able to get yourself to ratios is by firstly proving similarity, because once you are here, guys, it's just as easy as doing this. This line, QP, divided by this one, QS, right? The ratio of those two sides will be the same as the ratio of the side PA divided by the side SB. And this will be the same as the ratio of the side QA divided by the side QB. And this is because we've got similar triangles. We are able to say this because we've got similar triangles. If you look closely at what we have here, we can then go back and check the ones that the examiner was interested in. And that's QP divided by QS. QP divided by QS is this first part. QP divided by QS, we can then say, therefore, um, QP divided by QS is equal to the second one, which is QA and QB, which is the last part there. QA divided by QB. Very powerful stuff. The last part of this question is asking us to prove that PA is equal to PB. Now, remember what we know. We know X here. We know it's Y here. We know X here. We know X here. We know it's Y here from the previous information. For us to prove that this line is equal to this line, we just have to prove that this angle here, which is angle A1, is equal to angle B1. But if you look at what we are looking at, angle A1, right, is equal to exterior angle, is equal to X plus Y, right? This is because of the exterior angle in a triangle, equals to the sum of interior opposite angles of a triangle. And then the other one again, B1, angle B1 is also the same thing. B1 in triangle QBA is also equal to X plus Y because it's equal to this Y and that X added for the same reason as the one that we have at the top. Therefore, angle A1 is equal to angle B1. Therefore, the conclusion will then be PA equals to PB because they are sides that are opposite angles that are equal. Sides that are opposite equal angles. <laughs>